you haven't got problems, I feel bad for your son. I got 99 problems and a bitch ain't one. Any ghost experience, anybody? Ghost. Any paranormal experience? Late at night, and I was listening to um to Biggie, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you remember the uh the stereos where you could, the the LED light was on the knob, so you could see the you should move up. Yeah. And sure enough, we were sitting there laying on the bed and the volume went up. It went up? And we could see the you could see the knob turn. Was this before Biggie's death or after? This was after. <laughs> <laughs> he was in there, so I was like, hey, <laughs> baby, baby, baby. baby. That's what we were laughing about. <laughs> that was just oh, yeah, And that really happened. He <laughs> <laughs> said we never tell nobody because nobody gonna believe us. But if I call my wife now, she'll tell you that Biggie came and turned it up. <laughs> this horrible Christopher Reeve joke. He says, he has a new Superman coming out where there's kryptonite in every scene. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't move. You you did that joke. Tell the truth, though. I didn't do that. He, I said, he said that was his comment I can't name, but I was the guy who used to write for Kemmel. And then I kid Josh, uh, I forget his name. Uh, Jewish Josh kid. Chaffin. Jewish kid. Josh Chafin. <laughs> That's racist. That's Josh Chafinowski. <laughs> Josh Chafinberg. Okay. Nothing. Ew, nothing. <laughs> I'm sure people out there in the listening audience are laughing. If you thought that joke was funny, email us at hiccupradio at gmail.com. Nobody emailed your mom. Nobody emailed your mom. Man, you know how many emails I got last week from the Trayvon Martin speech? <laughs> and it was a bringer show, and I didn't understand the concept of a bringer show, and uh, I was like, I just moved I'm here. here. Yeah, <laughs> I just moved here. And then the day of, I got that call, I was like, hey, you don't have any reservations. And I was like, oh, but I just moved here, so sorry. And they're like, no, you won't go on stage. And I was like, what do you mean? And I basically, I was working in a clothing store, and I barked in the clothing store basically all day, wow. got three people to agree to it, <laughs> but I needed five, and then I got there and they told me I wasn't going to go on until my five people came, wow. and I felt so bad for these three people oh, wow. that when uh, no one was looking, I waited for the person at the door to go to the bathroom, and I ran, and I put marks beside my name. Wow. And then I got up on stage. <laughs> That's how you and feel. And good job. Good job. And then I bombed. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you could be an ex racist. Oh, yeah? Sure. Sure. You can get, um, everybody has a, I mean, you, a lot of people have a point in enlightenment. Look, look at Malcolm X. Yeah, don't look at my screen. Malcolm X was <laughs> anti whitey, white devil, white devil. And then he went to Mecca and saw white Muslims, and he was like, oh, wait a minute. And his heart changed. You know, yeah, he, he, had, he had a total different view when he came back. So yeah, you could be, a, you could be an ex-ray. You could be an ex-anything. You don't have to stick to me. You could be an ex-pedophile. Huh? What about pedophile? Could you be an ex-pedophile? Could you be ex-gay? No, you can't be <laughs> bad. <laughs> During the election, there was some lady from Ohio, and she was like, I'm afraid if Barack becomes president, his blacks just gonna take over. Like, that's some weird, like, you're gonna be giving a speech. I wanna say to all the American people that I am your motherfucking president. But I'm more afraid of the trailer park than the ghetto. I'm not afraid of some black guy with 20-inch rims and gold teeth. I'm afraid of a redneck with a gun rack and no teeth. That's what I'm afraid of.